All right, now we're going to talk about Dark Side of the Ring. Back yes. once again, Blood and Wire, Onita's FMW. Hell yeah, I love me some FMW, and there was a, uh, there's stories here that I knew about, but not as in-depth as I'd like to know, and this kind of expanded on it more than I realized it would. You know, for some reason in my head, and I don't know why I didn't think they would get Onita for this, but when Onita came up on the screen, I was like, whoa. Well, yeah. <laughs> I He's thought here. they were going to be talking third person about it. I don't Just know why. talking shit about him the whole time. Yeah, I thought, definitely thought they were going to do that. Yeah. Uh, but it was cool to see him here. I didn't realize even Onita's like, origin story with wrestling that there was a comic called Giant Typhoon that was based on Giant Baba, and that's how he got into wrestling. What the fuck? I'll be honest with you, Anita's entire story about anything ever is ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> so much so that I don't even know if it's true, yeah, but I'll believe it. It's so ridiculous. Yeah. So Jericho is on here too, and he's not only the commentator, but he's also talking, like as one of the guys <laughs> yeah. talking, so it's crazy. Uh, Jericho talks about All Japan and New Japan, uh, introduces the Funk Brothers, Dory and Terry, and how popular yes. they were in Japan at the time. Jericho says that Onita started out as a junior heavyweight in All Japan, and then went to meet Terry Funk, because he liked the style that he was wrestling which i uh, me too me too onita <laughs> terry funk said that he wanted to be like him and he said why would you want to be like me that's an awful thing to want to be <laughs> <laughs> terry funk is actually tremendous during this whole thing he is so good man yeah i'm glad that uh i'm glad they were able to get him to do this because too he put he really did put a lot into this that was a lot of fun to listen yeah. to. the story always was that onita had suffered injuries and couldn't do the style that he was doing before of course switching over to the new brawler style that you no in love nowadays, right? Sure, sure. Uh, Onita said he got to go to uh, Funk's territory, and he didn't want to lose to one of the guys. And and this is correct, right? Because he had come back from a trip yes. overseas, I believe, to the Dominican Republic. I believe is what they yeah, said. I, th I think that's uh, what, I think that's right. He got over to Funk's territory, and he was like, "I don't want to lose to one of these guys." So the promoters jumped him. <laughs> the promoter. <laughs> The promoter and a bunch of guys whooped his ass, and then Terry Funk took him under his wing. <laughs> That's a fucking crazy story. Yeah, it's DPW Origins, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on over here, son. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to do what? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> <laughs> Anita said that he discovered hardcore wrestling in Tennessee, which is the most ridiculous line I've ever seen. Not what I expected him to say. Anita said a fan in the crowd in a match he was in took liberties and kicked him in the face <laughs> with her high heels and busted him open hard away. Busted his shit all open. He said that it was a revelation for him that hardcore wrestling kicks fucking ass and this is what <laughs> yeah. we're gonna do. <laughs> Terry uh, says that he's, uh, Terry uh, himself, he said, he, he spoke Japanese like Onita spoke English so they were both lost. <laughs> Which is fantastic. He just put a yeah. cowboy hat on him and they had some beers. So it's yeah. like, yeah, that's enough. He also said he bought him a used car. Which yeah, to nice go though. up and down. Yeah. Yeah. Go places, which is fucking incredibly nice, you know, especially yeah, at like, the time. Absolutely you know, did not have have to do that i mean terry funk was a re well-respected fucking probably vet at that point let alone yeah. doing all that you know so anita went back to all japan and they showed this freak accident he had dude where he ended up winning i'm guessing some sort of tournament they didn't really go over what he wanted yeah. he just showed him with a belt and a trophy and then he jumped off the apron after a match and yeah. his knee got blown out hard away shattered yeah what the shattered fuck his is kneecap that? he said he saw his bone sticking out of his knee what in the hell that how does horrified that, me. How does that happen? That's got to be it's the just worst like, luck ever. But I yeah, guess in I the mean, end, it, it was probably better for him than anything in the world. I mean, uh, that probably, his knee was probably fucked, and it was yeah. probably going to go no matter what. But yeah, what a hard, like after a big win, and he's like on cloud nine, and you jump off the apron, and that's what fucking takes you out? Oh my God. He was told he couldn't wrestle anymore, but he said, yeah, sure, whatever. Right? Anyways. Yeah, Onita does not <laughs> listen to anybody, but a fucking Onita, and sometimes he doesn't even listen to himself. <laughs> so... So Onita started doing a bunch of random shit. Onita booked a series of matches against a martial <laughs> artist that did so well that he yeah. ended up starting FMW, which is Frontier That's Martial Arts Wrestling. Crazy. He just said, I'm going to I'm gonna do something different. I'm going to fight a martial artist in a wrestler versus martial artist match. You saw some of the B-roll from that shit? Yeah. They were just, bloodied up, man. They yeah. were really kicking each other's ass. That's awesome. Onita basically said FMW was just going to do whatever the fuck Baba and Inoki did. Didn't want to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, they did a uh, barbed wire ropes matches and then upped it to uh, add electrical shocks being rigged to it as well. So just this kept, whole, like you said, this yeah. is all just started. Onita just did this. Like he figured out how to like get the yeah. right people to rig all this together and Which just is really crazy because they show the footage of it. It looks really fucking good. I mean, uh, anyone that's watched FMW and you know, there's fantastic explosions, but like 
I, I don't know how much money they were working with then. I guess they were packing houses, so it must have been a decent amount. But, like, this look, uh, FMW's explosions always looked really good. And most of the time when they uh, when people over here try to duplicate it, it just looks like shit. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. It's just like a... I guess maybe regulations and stuff in America maybe. are a little Yeah, different. maybe. Um, so Mick talks about Megami Kudo, which was pretty cool, even though yeah. they don't really name her or talk about her. She was like a huge part of FMW. I was like, okay, yeah. I guess we're not going to just do you skate think... over that. I don't know. Is, I don't is know the bad? answer. Does she, okay. No, no. I, from what I understand, there's not at all. So I huh. don't. Maybe they just okay. didn't think it was integral to and the sure. story. Okay. Um, but yeah, she was a huge part of FMW. You sure. Know? Like she was like pretty much the lead. She almost had kind of the same story. She came from All Japan Women's, like Onita came yeah. from All Japan. So she came yeah. to FMW, and then she made an entire career out of it. So uh, we actually did a shirt uh, that had, like, one That's of her famous sweet. matches. Yeah. yeah. She created the Kudome Valentine, which everyone knows is the vertebraker or the, whatever, the Kudome <laughs> Valentine, the cock caller. The... <laughs> yeah. Whatever the case may be. Yeah. Talk about um, that fucker too, yeah. Yeah, of course we will. Mick, uh, Mick ends up talking about a spot that she did in a match where oh she took God. a fireball that seared her outfit into her skin, and he said that he had a match. Was that coming her up that next. took that? I thought that was somebody else that took that. I thought they said it was like, uh, oh, what's her name? It showed her with the, was it okay with okay. on the shoulder? Yeah, maybe Shark, I. May you're talking about Shark. She's yes, got, yes. She's got yellow hair and fucking yeah. She's way different. That wasn't her. Yeah. Oh, okay. So did they? get it wrong or did i was it a different clip i was thinking no of? it was a match between megami kudo and shark uh oh, Tsuchiya okay 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 and okay, shark okay. fireballed megami that's right that's right and okay that's, uh, that's yes 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 um so megami took a fireball that seared her outfit into her skin and then mick Fucking said he had a hell. main event match next we should watch that yeah and yeah we could yeah i think we could yeah. for watch this or something yeah, yeah we should um, and he said that he had never heard screams like the screams that he heard from her, and he yeah. just had to just go do shake it off. So yeah, yeah I mean, you gotta, you gotta show must go on in every fucking no matter what country. It seems like wrestling is very the show must go on. Sabu is here. Yes, Sabu speaks English. What the fuck? <laughs> Yeah, I hate it. I actually hate it, actually. Seven started talking. I literally wrote down my notes. What the fuck? <laughs> it's it, I can never think of Sab when so I hear Sabu. He I don't know if he still has his Facebook, but his his Facebook name, and I always think of him as this now, is this just his full name, is Sabu, 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 Sabu. <laughs> that was his name on Facebook. Yeah, that was his full name. That was just a short yeah, name here. Makes just, it easier. So I always I always uh, hear Sabu, 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 Sabu. <laughs> so they asked Sabu, he goes, they ask him, how does barbed wire feel? Sabu said, it sucks. <laughs> it sucks. Yeah. Uh, Sabu says that Sheik brought over Sabu for a tag tournament, and that's how he got yes. into FMW. Sabu said that in matches with barbed wire and stuff, when he got real sliced up, hospitals would take too long to stitch him up from barbed wire. <laughs> so he just started gluing himself and gluing the boys, too. I don't know where... Maybe I don't. Maybe there's just aspects of life that I have not experienced, but I don't know if that would ever go through my mind uh, to do that. You have to live a really different life. You know I, what think, I, mean? I think. I think. Well, yeah. shockingly, I think Sabu and I lived <laughs> have lived very different lives. Yeah, I think so. Too. Just so before like that, people. by the way, fucking Ricky Fuji. They interviewed Ricky fucking Fuji. I thought it was yeah. all like, oh, man, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ricky Fuji is actually a big part of this going forward. He, too. Uh, he brought Jericho over to FMW as well. And Jericho said his first FMW main event was an actual martial artist that just kicked his ass. <laughs> <laughs> Jericho said, what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Great. Fine, thank you. <laughs> so Ricky Fuji said that Onita would run like a super big stadium show. They'd yeah. finish up the main event. He'd get in the ambulance and then he'd just immediately start thinking, all right, what are we going to do for the next show? Like, that's, that's crazy. So crazy, man. Um, so Sheik and Sabu were in a match, literally oh, just called a fire match. Oh man. <laughs> it was just a fire match. So it was it was Sheik it was, and Sabu and Onita and uh Tarzan Goto. And this match is like it's literally just the ring surrounded by a bunch of fire sticks. Yeah, it's the ropes have like towels on them that you can ignite. And they ignited them. A lot. There's a lot of them. And they're this, not like placed insane. around evenly. They're just kind of thrown up and they're around and they're on fire. And Onita says the fire got too high and too hot and they were losing air very quickly inside the middle of the ring. Sabu said the FMW logo in the ring melted and was burning them. What the fuck? 
Yeah, that's uh that's wow. crazy. The whole story is actually insane. The visuals, I mean, if you haven't I would recommend seeking out the visuals for this because it's really insane. It's legit engulfed in fire. It's got a fire match. It's actually a fire not an inferno match. Not an inferno match at all. Fire, fire match. match. <laughs> so everybody got out of the ring except for the Sheik. And oh, Sheik got out eventually, but when he got out, he got sixty percent of his body oh, burned. And dude. he kept wrestling. Him and Onita were fighting on the floor. Sabu says he came up to throw uh, a bucket of water on his back, and he did that, and all the skin on his back came off. Mm, what the fuck? And he kept wrestling. He kept I don't wrestling. Know, man. <laughs> yeah. Again, I don't. I don't, I don't know. know, man. Like just different kind of shark, man. Yeah, I don't know. That's fuck. a good way to put it. That's horrific. Horrific. So FMW started popping off. Onita said he started getting a big head. He said he had a four bedroom house, five cars. He said he was making <laughs> two million a year. He said I was living good. Uh, yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> Terry Funk says the Yakuza were in control of the wrestling arenas in Japan. Mm. Mick would talk about going out to dinner with the sponsors. Yes. You know, and he'd be like, wow, okay, all these sponsors have their pinkies cut off. <laughs> Dude, what the fuck? So for people who don't know, that's usually a Yakuza thing to show that you're in with the yakuza or yeah. to show forgiveness when you fucked up really big um so that's it's horrifying it's crazy to think mick foley the santa claus guy was like <laughs> out with dinners with the yakuza yeah. and stuff that's like crazy well foley was a little bit of a different kind of shark before he was santa claus but i mean he probably had no, no year at I know, that point. But, like, but yeah no i agree he was yeah. probably always a santa claus guy You're which right. is like yeah, the crazy thing true. to think about yeah he suppressed the santa claus <laughs> To, to go out there and be Cactus fucking Jack. That's crazy, man. Yeah. I don't know. That's yeah. Cactus Jack is one of my favorite. Like that's one of my favorite runs ever, probably. You got the the ringside figure, right? Yeah, I, I got oh, it. Back. I just got it the other day. That fucking figure is so sweet. The All face right, scan just... on it is super good too. They did I a hope good job. AEW does an Onita figure. Yeah, that would be really cool. That I want to let him. So <laughs> they, dude, Onita would carny the hell out of them for that. Yeah, I don't know, you're yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Put Onita into the game too. Fuck it. Oh, wow, that would be so dope. Yeah, Holy I shit. think so too. I mean, um, I think the options are endless. But anyway, back to this. Jericho said uh, he, he felt like it was a money laundering scheme, uh, holding shows that the, the, the mafia would put on. So that was just how it felt there. It's crazy. I mean, that's pretty much all. A lot of wrestling in Japan early on was, uh, it's yeah. still like, still to this day, like, they don't even let, you know, you don't even joke about Yakuza interfering with wrestling anymore because yeah. it's such a serious problem, you know? Right. Um, Sabu actually said he got jumped by the Yakuza and yeah. Mike Awesome saved him. They did a thing where Sabu, uh, they said he was told to stay away from a certain section because it was the mafia section. Like, that's where there was a bunch of chairs, but it was only it was probably like 50 seats, but only 10 people were there because it was all, you know, it was just for them. And Sabu said, yeah, anyway, I fought over there. <laughs> <laughs> and, Sabu's fucked, man. and he got bumped into the crowd, but the, the, you know, the Yakuza didn't move. And later on, they were looking for him in the back, and Sabu got trapped, like, in a hallway, and a bunch of them just started whooping his ass. And then, as you said, Mike Awesome showed up and threw them all <laughs> off, and Sabu says he saved his life. That's like, such I a good after story. That. Yeah, yeah that's I love such them after a good that. story. Yeah, like, <laughs> hey, don't go over there. You're probably going to die. So anyway, I went over <laughs> there. <laughs> uh, so Anita invited Funk over in 93 for an exploding ring death match, which... <laughs> exploding ring time bomb death match. Uh, and a lot of people... Maybe modern day are probably familiar with this exact ending, except not going as well uh, for the Omega Moxley uh, exploding. Sadly, sadly, yeah. But this is what it was meant to be. This was, yeah. This is probably one of the more famous FMW matches. It's probably one of the coolest endings to a wrestling match ever, as well. Yeah, it really is. It was the. It was incredible, honestly. Terry actually said that they didn't even explain the gimmick to him before he got. They the didn't ring. tell him where the explosions were. <laughs> he just said, "All right." <laughs> <laughs> Onita said he wanted Funk to come over not, you know, to see how FMW was doing, but to see that Onita had become a success. <laughs> <laughs> what a carny, man. Jesus. Funk says about thirty to 40,000 people were there. Onita later on says 50,000 people. <laughs> Hell yeah, you damn right. What do you want to say more? 50,000? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but, yeah that was, you know, <laughs> you're right. Uh, Funk goes on to explain that he thinks that the people that bought front row tickets that were idiots. <laughs> that so, was good. Uh, 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 exploding ring death match. I'm going to get a front row ticket. <laughs> <laughs> True. Funker said that after this match, so if you guys haven't seen the finish before, 
Uh, the uh, Onita pins Terry Funk. He leaves the ring. Funk is laid out there. The ring's about to explode. Onita comes back into the ring. It's counting down for the ring to completely blow the fuck up. And he gets back in, covers up Funker. And the ring goes off, explodes into a million pieces, and Onita saves his favorite wrestler ever. Yep. After and beating him, smoke and fire and all this shit in the air and. All that's left is Onita covering Terry Funk's body, and it's an emotional scene. They're both crying in the ring. The crowd's losing their fucking mind. Uh, Maybe one of the best babyface moments in wrestling. Yeah, man. Like I said, man. Like <sighs> poor AEW, man. I know it should have, dude. No, we're no, we already like covered a, it. We're moving on. I, we already covered that on that show. I know, man. But damn, shit bro. No it's damn, bro. <laughs> God wanna, damn it. You should have uh, really just. <laughs> if it's not gonna work for for work, then you'd make it a fucking shoot. You put a fucking <laughs> ring out. Someone's gotta make yeah. this work. <laughs> As well. God. Damn it. <laughs> so, I don't want to relive it. You're right. Funker said that Onita ran and hid after the match and didn't pay up. <laughs> <laughs> no, they they asked man. Terry, they said, Were you satisfied with how much money you got? He said, Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. Um, Onita then started getting on TV and shit. And, uh, you know, Game once shows. you start. Once you start popping off like that, you know, basically like the the Scorpion King for the Rock and stuff, you sure. know, you end up retiring. Yeah. So Anita ended up retiring, I believe, in 95 or sometime 94, around there. Yes. 94, okay. Um, but they were grooming Hayabusa to be the next top guy, which I thought was pretty interesting that they got Hayabusa's daughter, Ayane Izaki. I thought that was pretty talk. crazy too, yeah. And she talked about cool. how you know how much she loved her dad and sure. how much of a hard worker he was and how, was how much he gave to the business. She's like, yeah, he wasn't a big dude or anything and he wasn't, he wasn't very great at most stuff, but he he worked really hard, and then he did, and he became great. And it's like she talks about how he, sweet. you know, probably shouldn't have been doing that death match shit, though. Yeah, I mean, probably. What's even cra- crazier is that like the death match shit wasn't even the thing that ended up paralyzing. No, him, which is yeah, insane it's, to think. But about. that's I feel like that always kind of is what happens. It's just wrestling again. The fucking kneecap. Yeah, with it's always something. Kneecap. It's always something stupid. So the ring announcer of FMW, Shaoichi Arai, took yes. over FMW after Onita retired. <laughs> Onita said, "Who wants to be president?" He said, "Me." He said, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> the fuck. <laughs> Onita did not smarten him up. No, at all. Didn't tell him anything. He just about, left. Yeah, he said, all right, here you go. Uh, what the hell? Arai's daughter says that Onita gave him the company, but Terry Funk says that he didn't give him jack shit. So I don't know what that, what Terry meant by that or what I he, think he gave him the company and he, what he meant is like, didn't smarten him up. Like, okay, didn't smarten yeah. him up and yeah. like, didn't teach him anything and then the attendance just fucking dropped and dropped well, and dropped. Ricky Fuji says the new FMW started and no one was really showing up anymore uh they showed so, yeah. footage yeah there's some, some interesting fucking footage of firecrackers in the ass spot <laughs> yeah that was like a ddt match or and something dancing like, and like food eating contest or something that's i don't awesome. know was, yeah i don't know what's going on <laughs> that's what dpw is gonna be <laughs> yeah, hot dogs you show up your ass we're gonna, we're gonna show them that that can work <laughs> corn nuts the new ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he started the old on the new one. That's awesome. <laughs> that feeds with the old DPW, which is just the same guys. <laughs> so Anita returns to FMW in '96, I believe, um, because yes. he started. I think it was seeing... like a year or so later because he he leaves and does a film, and realized his appeal isn't as much without wrestling. So he came back like after a year or so. This happens a lot, you know. Like you, sure. you ha- unless you have something that drastically pops off, like crazy, like. You know, Guardians of the Galaxy or, or yeah. something, you know, or something like that. Scorpion King. <laughs> Scorpion King, you know, going the crazy. Chaperone. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course, that did Knucklehead. super well. Knucklehead. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, you know, you have, <laughs> you have to still wrestle. Like, you have to. Um, so, Shaoichi ended up hiring Fuyuki to take over the new FMW stuff. And then that's where things went a little crazy. That's what Johnny was yeah. talking about with the ass full of fireworks yeah. and stuff. Um, right. Yeah. The TV networks in Japan wouldn't air FMW because the shit was just too violent. So they were like, "Okay, why don't we do ass eating fireworks?" And yeah, they wanted to the move. They wanted to the move away from death matches. Yeah. So Shaoichi ends up calling Onita into the office because he's in FMW at this point. Like they're starting <laughs> oh, to draw yes. a little more, and 
you know, he's back and things are going a little bit better here. They're they still want, doing they also, death matches. That dude brought in the World Entertainment Wrestling title. Oh, yeah, the WEW <laughs> WEW. Not to be confused, of course, <laughs> with WEW from earlier. <laughs> or either of the WEWs, yeah. Not, <laughs> none of the three or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah how many WEWs are there? I've everything was sad, but it was like, this is the fucking WWE or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, sorry, they were they called him into a meeting. Called him in, told him it was gonna be talking about some pre tape or something. Yeah, briefing uh, for a video or something, yeah. And then he said, You get the fuck out of here, you get out, you get out, you die. <laughs> <laughs> no, he said all the wrestlers lined up and said, Onita, please leave. <laughs> please quit. That's what crazy, man. And Arai even said, Onita, please leave FMW and we want Hayabusa on top. And Hayabusa no, okay. was standing there, apparently. Yeah. I do, that was a weird... I don't know if that, that seemed like... <laughs> <laughs> Onita is standing there to be told to fuck off. Hayabusa steps up, full mask. <laughs> just full out. gimmick? Yeah, I'd like <laughs> to be the top guy. <laughs> you gotta go. <laughs> You're not that guy, pal. <laughs> So he fucking leaves. Onita leaves SM FMW now, and Hayabusa is the uh, is the top guy, and things are actually starting to look a little bit better because Hayabusa becomes an international superstar. He's a draw, getting houses and shit, and everything. Sure, even without doing the deathmatch stuff, and it was like they felt like things were, you know, on the up and up because Hayabusa was the man. And then tragically, Ugh. Hayabusa takes a second rope moonsault and ends yep. up not getting the rotation. He slips on the ropes, lands right on his forehead. Uh, and it paralyzes him from the neck down. And this was in 2001. Yeah, I think that's that's one of those early, like, uh, not uh, like, like one of those clips that would float around like Kazaa and shit yep. like that, that you'd see that fucking everywhere, that and like Nick Mondo's uh, um, weed whacker spot, like shit like that. Those would be like a compilation of just fucked up wrestling shit. Yeah, that was fucking... Like I was surprised they showed the full thing. It's pretty rough to watch. Like, they show the full thing, and I guess I don't. Maybe I just didn't. I only ever saw the clip, and I didn't watch what happened after. They're like jerking his head around yeah. and shit, like trying to get him up. And I mean, I, I guess if you're panicking, you don't know what the fuck is going on. You don't assume a guy just fucking snapped, his, or broke, you know, broke all his shit and paralyzed himself. But like, they're like moving him and stuff. I'm like, oh my, this is fucking gross. Ah. Yeah, Sabu says it was the worst injury that could have ever happened. He said if he had something like that happen, he'd rather would have just died. Than he legit said, he said, I, I'd rather die than have that happen to me. So without Hayabusa, FMW basically just starts to die out. Like, there's just, they had nobody else yeah. that could take over that spot for Foley him. said they, they never really found someone to replace him. Uh, Hayabusa's daughter talked about how, like, he was depressed after the injury and stuff. Uh, and it pretty much, his injury, like, set in motion a, just a disaster financially for FMW. So Shaoichi Arai started using family money to keep FMW afloat and then Jesus. that started getting into loans from the Yakuza. Yeah. Sabu said he never got paid for the last show because oh, Shaoichi Jesus. Arai hanged himself the next day. He said he didn't get paid and Arai said, oh, I'll send you the money tomorrow and then the next day he killed himself. What the fuck? He like hung him. He hanged himself in a schoolyard, right? Yep, in a schoolyard is what it said. Fucking shit, man. Yeah. Uh, Onita was saying like he should have just came to me for the money instead of going to the fucking Yakuza. But obviously they were not in the best relationship. I don't even know sure. if Onita would have really no, I, gone, I'm, you know. Yeah, the, so he ends up hanging himself. And then that doesn't stop the Yakuza coming to his family. Because that's not how it works. Like your debts live yeah. past It was you. pretty rough. It was pretty much, yeah. Sabu said, the, you know, the Yakuza gets her money no matter what. And uh, it's pretty, you know, he wasn't too uh, thrilled with him doing that because... You know, then they, like you said, they just go after your family. They're gonna get their money no matter one way or the other. Uh, so the Yakuza took the family home from uh, Shell and uh, her mother. Shell yes. then says that she feels like Onita used her dad, yeah. and that he was too kind to be in the wrestling business like that. Uh, FMW then comes back in 2015 with yeah. Onita wrestling and Hayabusa as an executive. But yes. right as this starts coming back and things are looking good for FMW on the return. Hayabusa would pass away soon after in his home. Uh, see, I they said he collapsed in his home. I for some reason I don't remember. I didn't remember that. I didn't realize he it was like a it was something like that. I didn't. I I guess I didn't know what he actually passed away from. But yeah, it was like a year. Away. Yeah, it was a year after they started this. So it showed footage of Hayabusa walking at the WMF event in two thousand two. Oh my god! And I remember seeing this for the first time, and like that's such a this is pretty powerful, honestly. Yeah. Seeing, yeah, seeing it's that. I mean, like, I remember it being a big fucking deal. Yeah, Hayabusa walking, I remember, was, like, a crazy, like, event. So, Onita at the end here talks a little bit more. He says that he created real hardcore wrestling 
And Sabu said, yeah, that's for true, because I took all that yeah. shit to ECW. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he said, what I learned from there, I took it, and he said, ECW was formed because of FMW. Uh, and, they, and then they got to they, work with him. Yeah, that was, yeah. I, I swear there was supposed to be, Anita was definitely advertised for a, uh, I don't know if it was an exploding mod, a match or something. He was definitely meant to be at, like, one of the ECW pay-per-views, and it just fell through. But I feel like that happened with all of those. Like, I'm pretty sure he was meant to go to XPW. I'm pretty sure he's meant to do something for CZW. <laughs> like, those always fucking happened. And it wasn't until, like, maybe a few years ago, right, that he did that match with Tremont in yep. CZW that he, like, came over to actually do something. So that Which is kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah it was. Crazy. And now they're doing again. Onita's facing Tremont in Jersey on Halloween, I think. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So is it exploding gimmick? I don't know. I... I the, the building they're running. Oh, no, they might be running a bigger place, actually. It might actually be. Oh, that'd be cool. I, I, I'm not sure 100%, but yeah, I mean, I love me some Matt Tremont, and uh, I'm sure he'll, you know, do fucking well with Onita, but yeah, that's uh, that's pretty fucking crazy. It's a double hell match. <laughs> I, I <don't>, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's always exploding. <laughs> yeah, whatever you whatever you think that might be. Yeah, that's uh, that's, that's awesome. what the fuck that shit is. Yeah. Uh, they asked Terry Funk. They said, if you could say anything to Anita right now, what would you say? And Terry Funk flips off the camera. <laughs> that was he awesome. said, No, nah, no. He said, No, nah, no. Nah, I love him. Uh, Anita then ends the the episode with, "There's only one Hulk Hogan. There's one Giant Baba. There's one Antonio Noki." And there's one at Sushi Anita. That's absolutely fucking for true. God damn. Yeah. What yeah, an episode, the, man. What a crazy history. He legit just made a company because he said, I can and I'm going to do whatever I want. So stadiums and shit, yeah. man. Well, yeah, we're fit, doing that, right? Yeah, I think that's our plan, too. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully a little better. You know, no, yag, no Yakuza. Yeah, and, uh, maybe we can get past the Yakuza thing. We'll yeah. Yakuza, but, uh, I mean, you want to you wanna beat up Tony a little bit? That's fine. We can do that. Yeah, that'd be okay. You <laughs> can work around that. Kick his ass. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Call yeah, Tony man. to the office. Tony, leave. <laughs> Tony, can you please leave? And then bring him back next week. 